Well, opening statements are scheduled to start Monday in former President Trump's New York hush money trial with a full jury and alternates selected and sworn in. Trump saying this yesterday. What's happening here with the judicial system is an outrage. This is a giant witch hunt to try and hurt a campaign that's beating the worst president in history. Here to react is New York-based trial attorney Rebecca Rose Woodland. Rebecca, thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for You're familiar with how justice is administered here in New York. What do you take, or so-called justice, what do you take from this first week? In the first week, I've never seen something move so rapidly on something that's so important. So Donald Trump has constitutional rights like everyone else, but somehow this judge is moving past things that he should be slowing down, taking his time, and giving intense weight to. That's justice. We're not seeing that here. Hmm. Rebecca, one thing, you know, when you look at kind of what's been going on so far, they've denied the change of venue. Mm -hmm. They're not disclosing the witnesses beforehand, uh, the gag order on former President Trump. I heard uh, former Attorney General Bill Barr also say, you know, the timing of this trial, you know, seven years after the supposed mm -hmm. fact, you know, it's hard to deny the fact that this seems politically motivated. What's your take? Well, it's obviously politically motivated. It's obviously set at a time and being rushed so that president, the former president cannot campaign. What we're seeing is change of venue motion denied. The appellate court said, keep moving forward on the trial, but we'll decide that appeal later. Let's, let's pick some jurors. Oh, we have 12 in alternates. Let's hurry this up. Why are we hurrying it up? No other cases. When you have very serious issues, these are 34 counts against someone. And we're rushing through in a venue, in a location where most people, 95% of these jurors are Democrats. So how do we know what their inherent bias is if we don't give them time to be able to have a, an understanding in the jury selection process of who they are dealing with? You don't have that time when you're being rushed like this judge is doing. Mm. Hey, Rebecca, this just, it, you know, it was a wild first week where it yeah. just, it comes away as, as a clown show and meaning there's just so much going on. I mean, a, a man lit himself on fire out in front of the courthouse mm -hmm. yesterday. You had a juror dismissed because he or she said they were going to be harassed and too much yeah. public information was, was let out. And I keep looking at this and I'm going, that's the first week. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, they have six alternates. But I was sitting there thinking, how many other jurors are going to ask out? Because this is going to be a crazy month. And I kept thinking, does this, how does this not end in a mistrial? And the only way that I can think the answer is, well, Will, it's because you have a judge who would never declare a mistrial because his goal is to get to the point where they can say Donald Trump convicted felon. Okay. The judge didn't recuse himself. That's the first step in this whole train of crazy. Mm -hmm. The judge didn't recuse himself when his daughter works for the Democratic Party fundraising. If that's not an inherent conflict, I don't know what is. So what are we going to see here? We won't, I do not predict a mistrial. What I predict is appeal after appeal. And then if we get to the appellate division, the Court of Appeals in New York, after that highest court, if the president, former president is still found guilty, then we will see the Supreme Court take this and up. And you're because, talking about years. Not necessarily. Or would they speed that up in this? We'll see. We'll see. The appellate courts will be asked to speed it up. But the Supreme Court, once the writ is, is presented, can take it very quickly if it's a very important matter, which everyone would say it is. Right. He's campaigning for president. Yeah. Or well, he's supposed to be. Okay. But he's not allowed to at this point. He wasn't even allowed to go to the Supreme Court to hear his own argument. He's not allowed to go to his son's graduation. I mean, you know. It's incredible. Uh, and, and it all you. starts Monday. Rebecca Rose Woodland, yes. thank you so much. Appreciate thank you. Insight. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.